everybody, welcome back to the Retro Sports Gamer channel. Today I want to do a video that I call Understanding the Player Ratings. Now I have my own channel at Tecmo 101, which you can reach on my blog at Tecmo 101 and YouTube. But I wanted to start making some videos again for the Retro Sports Gamer channel that I play on every Monday. And we do a lot of tournaments on there. And I have a few of my Tecmo videos up here. And I, something that just occurred to me is I talk a lot about understanding the player ratings and how they work and how to use them. But I don't think I've gotten too in-depth about it. And I think this video is a good time to just go over a few things, especially before a big tournament like the Tecmo Players Championship coming up in April and all these other tournaments coming up. So let's go into it. In the past, I made a video, which you'll find on my channel, called the JJINT Drill where you played against yourself, and it was very careful, and you had to throw practice getting in position to do JJINTs, which I'm about to do right now on defense with the Vikings. But first, I gotta put in Scott Mitchell with 44 pass control, and that this is what we're gonna go over in this video. So I'm gonna guess a pass play, but a different pass play with the Dolphins, and so the first receiver on all curls is going to be the top receiver. So one-handedly, I'm going to be... Boom! Picked off! Now, with the same play with the Vikings, I am going to play defense with the Dolphins with their 56 INT defensive backs. And I'm going to go for the same thing. Reposition myself somehow. Okay, I, I see what I got to do. One second, this takes a minute to think of because I gotta think of everything. Alright. It's only a pass deflection. Alright, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a quarterback change that I would never make. Put put a Mr. Gannon. Oops, guessed the wrong play. Alright, put a Mr. Gannon. And now on this example, uh, Dolphins are going to choose one shotgun. No. Okay, they chose shock. Sorry, sorry. This is difficult at best. Alright, so this time I'm going to throw down here for the example. Just a second. I really need to choose the right place here. Alright, this time I'll be able to do it, hopefully. Try again, we got one more try at this. Ready, down, put, 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 With them is this play, and here is gonna be on this play. This play, I gotta press A twice. Fast deflection. Alright, let's go try one more time. Just guess this play, this play. I had three hands, it would be awesome right now. Nope, just timed it wrong. I mean, it was picked off, and we're going to go over situations like that. So, I, I showed you this JJINT drill, and I'm just using it as an example right now. Let me hit the reset button, and we're going to go over why things work the way they did. So, we're going to start off with Minnesota and Joey Browner. He's one of the best defensive backs in the game, and he has 69 interceptions. That's our key number right now. The quarterback I picked up had 38, I believe 38 pass control. He had 44 pass control, which is a good number, but he was outclassed. So the key to the JJINT is to be Let's see, 44, 50, 56, 63. To be, if you're four levels above him, it's guaranteed. So he's a 44, 56 is one, 
69. Now, sorry, 50 is 1, 56 is 2, 63 is 3, so 69 is 4. If you got four levels or more on him, it's an interception. As you may have seen, the ratings in this game go up by increments of 6 and 7. So 6, 13, 19, 25, 31, 38, 44, 50, 56, 63, 69, 75, 81, 88, and very rarely 94 and 94. Hitting power double, which reach 94, and of course 199, which you may rarely see if somebody's in good condition. But the key thing here, for, just for the JJINT, is pass control is 44 for Scott Mitchell, and my Minnesota defensive bat had 69 interceptions. Conversely, when I tried to pick off Wade Wilson with 44 pass control, and Rich Gannon was 38. I had a defensive back on Miami that only had 56 interceptions. So that's that's uh, for the 44, it was 50-56. It was only two levels. For the other one, it was 44-50-56, three levels. Now, at three levels, there's a low percentage chance of it happening, but it's very rare. So for practical purposes, you need to be four levels above. Well, this gets into the deeper discussion of how things work. Well, almost every play, especially when you pass in tech, well, comes down to odds. That's what all these little numbers here mean. So, and we're going to go over some of the key ones right now in Miami. So, like, the key one is pass control. The better your pass control, the more likely your quarterback to be on target with the pass and the more likely to complete the pass. The less likely, as it goes up, the less likely for interceptions, jumping interceptions, even deflections. Like 69 pass control here, guys like QB Bills with 81 pass control, often even good defensive backs can't deflect their balls with like 44 INT because they have just so much more pass control than the INT. But there's other numbers here that are meaningless. Pass, accuracy of passing and pass, avoid, pa, accuracy of passing, meaningless. Avoid pass block only matters at the line of scrimmage. But besides that, it's meaningless. It only matters when you first throw the ball. So it's hardly anything. Defensively, now, defensively for your defensive bats, now you may not be able to get into the JJINT because I've already shown you that levels thing. So you've got to have a really good guy. For example, Everson Walls is just borderline. Most good quarterbacks have 44 pass control. So what you're looking for is a defensive back with 69 INTs or more. You're looking for Wayne Haddix on Tampa Bay, the probably the best defensive back in tech ball, the fastest but has 75 INTs. You're looking for Joey Browner, Mark Carrier with the high mark. He has 81 interceptions. He's a beast, and there's some very good quarterbacks he can destroy. His weakness, though, is he's slower. You got David Fulcher, another beast, 69, intercep 69 interceptions, 69 maximum speed. You got San Diego's Gil Bird, another great weapon, except for he's at the DB2. Same for M Martin Mayhew, almost the same exact stats. And uh, Houston, another one who has Richard Johnson, but usually in the level of games he plays in, he doesn't play as big as a factor because all the high-level teams have high pass control. When you throw the ball in coverage, it comes down to three different factors. Pass control of the quarterback, reception ability of the receiver, and interception. And it's an odds calculation. And the, and the key thing is... In most parts, the key thing is still pass control versus INT. Now, but there's going to be a lot of pass co coverage catches. People will see Miami all the time get coverage catch. And here's why. 69 receptions to negate the receiver. 63 receptions. And, of course, Jim Jensen, 69 receptions. Guys with a lot of REC, they, they, get, uh, they get a lot of pass coverage catches. They jump up and catch it more often than guys who don't. They don't ever do that thing where they miss. But the pass control is key. All right, now let's get to some practical numbers you need to know. Not every quarterback's going to be Dan Marino with 69 pass control. 
there's a lot of teams that are going to be used, especially like in the Players' Championship where I banned teams, where you got to understand what's the lowest you can get away with. Well, for practical purposes, the lowest, the number that's the most practical and lowest that you can get away with is 44. Why 44? Teams like New England, they have a, their, their best quarterback, 44 pass control, and 25. And we'll look around at a few others. Minnesota, 44, 38. A few other teams. Phoenix, 44, 38. You're seeing a pattern develop. New Orleans, 38, 44. And so on. Atlanta, 44. If you go through the whole game, you're only going to find a couple teams with less that, 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 don't, that does not have a 44 pass control quarterback. The Colts. Probably one of the worst teams in Tecmo. Best they do is Jack Trudeau with a 38 pass control. Pittsburgh, great defense, a 25 pass control Brister, and a 38 pass control Rick Strom. Uh, next up, Denver, a, 20, a 31 pass control John L.A., but who's very fast and has high passing speed, and a 38 pass control Gary Kubiak. San Diego, another team. 31 with high passing speed, 38 with a lower passing speed. Raiders, 31 pass control, 38. And last but not least, the only team in the NFC to be in this predicament. Well, actually, no, even Detroit has a 44 pass control. And Pete, who has a lot of speed too. But we got Mike Tomzak, 31. Jim Horabaugh, I mean Horabaugh, 25. So you got to... So there's the example. Every other team has at least a 44 pass control quarterback. Making 44 pass control probably the minimum of what you want from your quarterback. And since the game is spread out so much with, it, with guys of high INT, even at the lowest level, you're like, well, I'm at the bottom end of the game. Well, we'll take a look at New England. They're like the second or third worst team, and they got a 63 INT guy who's a night who could be a nightmare on bad quarterbacks. Now, passing speed isn't as important, but it's plays factor. If you have too, too little passing speed, like Dave Craig, who has 69 pass control, you're thinking, wow, this guy's a great quarterback. Well, his 25 passing speed is too little, and it makes him very inaccurate. And then on the other end of the scale, you got guys like Warren Moon. Ah, great, he's got 75 pass control, but he also has got 69 pass speed, and Marino has 70, 81 pass speed. Sometimes these guys get a little bit inaccurate. What you're looking for is more like, and I hate to use this example because they had the best receiver, but you're looking for your 56 passing speeds. You're looking for guys with 56, Jim Everett, a little more accurate, 56, 50, and ideally, if you could get it, 44 passing speed. That's, the, that's, the, that's like, almost like a magic number for a jumping catch. All right. Next up, we're going to talk. So that so that's the key thing to know about quarterbacks. Your minimum's 44. Every time you can go above that on pass control, but the key stat's pass control. Running backs. Now you they range in a big range. Of course, you got Bo Jackson, 75 MS, and then you got New England, whose starting running backs are 25, 31, 31, 31. How much speed do you really need out of a running back? And my answer to that has always been, at a bare minimum, you can get away with Pittsburgh. They have a collection of 38 MS running backs. But if you can get 44 MS at the very minimum, 44, and they have a couple 44 MS running backs, so they got Johnny Hector. If you can get 44, that's going to be enough speed to be able to do something effective in the running game. And, of course, if you can get more, the better. Receiving lies. Well, we talked a lot about defensive backs, but in general, receiving lies, if he's wide open, how much is, how much is going to be really practical to catch the ball for a 44-pass control quarterback? And the answer might surprise you. I'll go to the Buffalo Bills, and I'm going to look at a running back. Thurman Thomas, 50 receptions, wrong guy, looking for a different guy. Um, let's see. Uh, he's got a lot of receptions trying to think of a running back right now. Sorry about the momentary brain fart. We'll have to look around. I think Detroit, Barry Sanders, 44 receptions, and Mel Gray at 50. 
uh, James Brooks. I think this is the cutoff point for your receivers. You want to have at least 38 receptions for for uh, 44, but 38, 44. You can get away with some 38, but if your receiver has at least 44 receptions, he's probably going to catch the ball for most quarterbacks. A great example I could give you is the Cowboys. A lot of people like to play Jay Novacek as their uh, as the starting receiver because he has the 44 max speed at the top. But I, I still like Michael Irvin. He has 50 receptions. Once you get to 50 receptions or above, it, 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 the odds are, are deeply in your favor as long as you have a 44 pass control QB. It's just putting the odds in your favor. Eventually, you reach the point where you see guys with 75 receptions. Things like above 69, there's hardly a big, big difference. Of the, the odds calculations a little bit, but even say Jerry Rice, what really makes Jerry Rice so deadly? Yeah, is this is the speed. He has 69 maximum speed, and the 81 receptions is a big factor. But just as big as that 81 receptions is he got a quarterback throwing to him with 81 pass control. Next thing you're probably wondering about wide receiver speed is you're not always going to get 69. And then my answer to that is if you look at the low end of the Ryan, Stilling Sharp's always been considered a beast of a receiver, and his speed is 50. 50 is really where you start to change the game. 44 is okay, but if you get a receiver with 50 or above, he's going to be pretty good. Another great receiver I always find with 50 who's pretty ignored is, the, is Sean Collins. 50 receptions, run and shoot receiver, great in the game. All right. Now, we've got over some defensive numbers. We've got over interceptions. And the next number on defense I want to go over is a combination of running speed and running power. This determines how fast they are. When you start looking at guys like 44-50, 50-56, well, how much speed do you want to be able to make your guys super maneuverable? And we're going to go back to Mark Carrier. Mark Carrier has a 44 running power to 56 maximum on speed, but feels kind of slowish. Meanwhile, I, I've taken a lot of teams like, if you run around at the same time with Keith Millard, ignoring their different positions, you're just paying attention to 50 rushing power and 56 max speed, Keith Millard will seem way more maneuverable and way more faster. So... Key number here is to have 50 rushing power at least, and at least 50, if not 56 maximum speed, and then you're starting to talk about a very usable defensive player. As for hitting power, it's more it's not for you, it's for your drones. If there's too little hitting power on defense, they can be dominated by some running backs of high hitting power. This is another one of Tecmo's great little math equations where something always happens. Let's take... Green Bay's Michael Haddix, 94 hitting power. And now let's look at the Buffalo Bills defense. 80, uh, 75 hitting power. He can't be popcorn. As you know, popcorn is when a guy has so much more hitting power than the defender, they just they just crumple and go away like popcorn. Seals at right at 50, he's popcorn. 44, popcorn. 38, definitely popcorn. More popcorn. 56 is probably the cutoff, 63, so if you can get 56 hitting power, that is important because the drones will seem stronger and better than 38, 38, 38, 44. A lot of popcorn on the Bills defense. Another, def another team that's very good that has a defense without a lot of hitting power, you'll notice is Cincinnati, 50, 44, 44. One guy was 69, 38, 38, 38. 31, 31, uh, 50, just not enough, and 75. So that's, was that two guys? Yeah, that's right, just two guys. James Francis, David Fulcher. Everyone else is weak. And when you have a bunch of weak guys, that's why the, that's why the drones don't seem to ever break tackles. Like, take another look. Pittsburgh, 50, 56, 44, 63, 50, 44, 44, 69, 56, 38, 50. A lot more hitting power, a lot more speed. It's why it's considered one of the best defenses in the game to have Pittsburgh. 
You know, like the Giants defense, another defense, 56, 50, 50, 75, 69, 38, 63, 31, 50, 50, and 56. More hitting power, the better on your defense. And last but not least, we went over interceptions for the point of JJ INTs, but what's the minimum you need? Well, let's look at Seattle. They have a very fast safety with only 25 interceptions. It's not good. It's just not good. We'll take a look at another team, the Bills. Bills have a very weak secondary, especially in the high end of the game. They have 44, 44, 50, 38. They get beat in pass a lot. And then uh, let's look at a great secondary, Chicago. 56. 81, 63, 69. So it, it, it all goes back to the quarterback number. And so on the low end of the raw of the low end of the game, when you're talking about tier four, five, or six, you're talking stuff. Any team from the Colts to say Washington or so, any team in that area, you're going to want at least a 44 INT defensive back somewhere, if not a 50 INT. Ideally, you want 50 INT or more. 44 you'll get away with, but if you can get 50 or more, that's what you want. At the higher end of the game, you're probably going to want 56, if not more. Some great examples of 56 INT guys. They don't get the JJ INT, but they can dominate the secondary of the uh, Dolphins and almost the mirror secondary of Phoenix, who both have 56 INT. All right. And that's today's video. So in conclusion, what I went over today are just some uh, some things about player ratings. And we're going to review them real quick. First, we're going to start off with the QB. The QB, you want as a minimum, you're going to want 44 pass control, ideally. There's a few teams where you're gonna, the best you're going to get is 38 or a high passing speed quarterback. But you want to get 44 pass control. Your, your, your running back, as far as speed, a minimum you're going to want is 44 MS. Your uh, receivers, as far as speed, if you could get 50 MS or more, that's what we're going to want. As far as receptions ability, you're going to want at least 44 for your running backs and receivers. Now on to the defensive side of the ball. You, we're going to go with the rushing power of a minimum of 50, rushing maximum speed of 56, um, maximum speed 56, INTs 50 if you're on the low end of the game, if you're facing a good quarterback, 56. And last but not least, I didn't mention kickers. Most of the kickers are about even. Nick Lowry, I should mention, is the best kicker. The kickers to be very wary of are, are the Rams kicker, Mike Lansford of the 19 kicking ability. Of, of ignore avoid kick block it's all kicking ability Houston's kickers and Deos 38 he's not good Phoenix kicker Del Greco 19 kicking ability uh, I think Philly's kicker is Roger Ruzek oh he's a 50 that's good kicking you're gonna want 50 kick ability if they're below 50 and especially these 19 guys these 19 guys can barely put it in if you have the ball to 46 so keep in mind that's an important number too all right, anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching the Retro Sports Gamer channel, and there are going to be more videos like this in the future and on my channel of Techmo 101.